everyone. I haven't spoken to you like this for a while. Um, sorry if my head's a bit scruffy, I've just took it out of the bun. It seems to be constantly in a bun lately because of working at the restaurant. Um, I'm out in the garden. I've just done some gardening, which I will show you later on in the video. I just wanted to say thank you all for bearing with me. It's been a really busy time. And although I've put some snippets on there as updates, the editing's not been great, I know. I'm sorry about that. Just wanted to keep you a little bit posted on what's happening. Um, there's conkers falling down behind my head. I'm not actually right under the tree, luckily. Did you hear those? <laughs> anyway, um, I just wanted to give you a quick update. We're a bit more organized now, so we're getting a little bit more time to ourselves. So I'm hoping to get back to slightly longer videos, better editing um, and this vi this week's video is a little bit of everything. Uh, people are asking me questions about the garden. As you can see the grass is really really long. Um, I've just filmed a little bit because I've had a couple of hours off this afternoon between shifts, uh, between services at the restaurant so I've done a bit of weeding and I've sown a few things which I haven't been able to do for a while. Um, it, is, it, is been, it has been getting a little bit untidy which is a shame and we still haven't got around to putting stones down yet but that will happen soon um, we've started again with the DIY in so we're now um, working up in the apartment which was where we were when we stopped work to start on the restaurant so I'll be showing you a little bit of that it's mostly decorating now there's not too much work going on up there but it'll be decorated and furnished um, I showed you I was going to the Brockhant to buy some wardrobes so you'll see where those are going shortly as well um, I've also shown you a little bit about the menu at the restaurant so I hope you enjoy thanks for bearing with me and hopefully from now on your, your videos will be a little bit more regular and a little bit longer you've seen me look at quite a few cabinets in Bacance in France and I did tell you that I had one of these carved cabinets already but that the top part was in the UK well recently when Tony the paint came over he managed to bring the top part over for me finally we have the whole cabinet so I just wanted to show you this I'm about to go through lots of boxes that he also brought over and fill the cabinet with my, some of my china and glasses that have arrived with this now, this didn't originally start off together because the bottom part of the cabinet is different wood. Some of it, the doors are different. I think the actual framework is the same wood. But we fell in love with this years ago when we first went to um, the Lille Bradry, which we used to go to regularly in September. And we took this all the way back to the UK on top of our little van that we had at the time, strapped on with a big lump of carpet. <laughs> and when we bought it, these lead lighted windows with the insignia, which is CD or DC, hope you can see that. We had these completely re leaded because they were very, very wobbly. All the pieces were there, and it is actually beautiful colours. I open the door towards the light I may be able to show you oh obviously there's a few cobwebs have come with it from the UK so I'm going to have to clean that inside before I put anything in there but yeah we're looking at this these glass doors this beautiful lead windows on this cabinet I absolutely love this I have no idea who CD or DC was this was obviously their cabinet at some time and um, we actually we fell in love with the carvings look at the fruits carved on the side here this is very typical of what we see a lot in the Brocance but this has lived with us in several different houses it's traveled around and now it's come back to France finally
Well, yeah, I'm really happy to have it back. I haven't seen it all in one piece for a long time. It's been in storage. It's a really useful piece of furniture. So I'm going to give it a clean up on the inside and then I'm going to unbox some of my treasures and put them in there. I'll just stand back a little bit. Let's see it from a distance. In the corner of my lounge there. So oh, I'm just opening up some of the boxes that have come over with the what we call the French cabinet. So these are going to be things that I've not seen for a long time. It's very difficult to unpack things with one hand. Ah, we have a pair of these. The other one's probably in this box as well. Uh, yeah, let's put him up there for the minute. There's the repro French lions that we bought at some brocant somewhere. What else do we have in here? Oh, some tea lights. Are they tea? Yeah, tea lights. Ah, teapots. We have a teapot. It's in this one for a little while. Right. Yeah. I have a set of this, uh, including coffee pot, coffee cups. Uh, yes. Used to use this quite a lot. Anyway, that can go in my nice cabinet up here somewhere. I'll get the rest of the set out. What else have we got in here? Some glasses and things, I think. Oh, glass bowl. Ah. Now, some more pieces of Denby pottery. Um, but yeah, it's in here. Ah, this was my grandmother's. My grandma's glass bowl. I remember this from a little child in her cabinet. <laughs> wow. I haven't seen that for a long time. Ah. Yes. We do have some quirky. Quirky things in our collections. This, I think, is probably 50s flare. Uh, a uh, something garden production made in England. I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, if anyone can tell me anything about this. I think there's some smaller plates and maybe some bowls and cups that goes with this set. Anyway, that's just a few things coming out of the boxes. If I find anything else that's really interesting, I'll show you. But I'd better get on with the unpacking. Right, I've unwrapped a bit more. This one. Ah! Very difficult with one hand, but yeah. I think that's a claret jug. Anyway, port, anyway. decanter jug, so a pewter lid on it, and a pewter ice. Oh. Again, another French uh, another French brocante purchase. And we have another jug in here. Uh, 
and another glass jug. Um, this is another Brock Hamp purchase. As you can see, this one's still this one's still got the label on it. it looks like how much of that says twenty or twenty two. Euros, I probably would have paid about 15 for it. But yeah, that's, that's, uh, I haven't seen that for a long time either. But yeah. That would actually look very nice with some flowers in. I think I might do that. Well, I've just been down to the garden to find what's out there for us to eat. And I've picked a few corn cobs, a little bit weird shapes, but they'll be nice for our tea. And the cucumber, there's a little pepper there, and a couple of courgettes. Not a bumper harvest, but there's been plenty of beans and things down there. Unfortunately, only a couple of tomatoes, because they all got blight. But, um, yeah, I'm pleased with what we've grown. Obviously, it's totally organic. So we're going to have the corn cobs um, for our tea. And I might make a bit of salad or something. But yeah, I just thought I'd let you see what we let you see what came out of my garden. Some people have been saying that they've missed seeing the garden. Well, the grass is doing really well. It's a little bit damp at the moment to cut it because we've had. A few days of fairly wet weather, although it's absolutely beautiful today, but it's turned a little bit colder. But it's looking very lush, isn't it? I will take you and show you my veggie patch, my potager. As you can see from here, we still have the white fabric down and we still have not been able to get the stones laid on the pathways so Tony's just been keeping it strimmed for me um, we will get there eventually but obviously we've had an awful lot to do recently so I haven't had much time to spend out here so it's not the prettiest um, but I've had lots of produce the French beans are now coming to an end here, but obviously I've left these. I will have lots of seeds for next year. So I'll let all these pods dry and save some of those for next year. I've also got a few of the red bean pods drying on there. And I've actually got quite a lot of the runner beans still on there. I didn't actually get the chance to eat too many of them because of working in the restaurant. We haven't actually been eating that much, but yeah, look, there's some, there's some whoppers. So I'll have plenty of seeds for runner beans. I have still got some that we can eat, um, some smaller ones, but I've left a lot of them there to go to seed. So it's been a bumper crop actually. some lovely fat ones they'll produce some really good seeds for next year now the bed over by the wall here has uh, gone very wild because I just haven't had the time to weed everything so the brambles have taken over very slightly I will be cutting this all back at this weekend because now we've now we've got a bit more settled at the restaurant and we're in more of a routine and we know the numbers of customers that are coming in which is quite a lot actually we can step back a little bit and start going back to our gardening and DIYing and things anyway I picked some of these corn cobs the other day they were absolutely delicious and I've had a steady supply of courgettes so many that we haven't been able to eat them all um, they're coming to an end now. Obviously there's some more corn cobs at the back there. So we'll be eating those. We'll be picking those and eating those soon. Now I've had plentiful supply of herbs. I have used lots and lots of herbs. As you can see there's, there's bundles of chives. This uh, basil that tastes like caram. Um, 
the fresh basil is coming to an end now where it's flowering so I will save a few of the seeds ready for next year and in amongst it is some wild mint that grew in the garden anyway so I've allowed that to stay in a few places um, there's rosemary um, as you can see I've also had some peppers that one's gone a little bit past its best I've had quite a few peppers off of these plants now my leeks are doing really well let's use the few weeds that are in there with them but yeah they've been doing really well but I haven't had the time to plant successionally which is a shame because once these are ready that's it uh, on top of that I'm still digging up a few potatoes it all looks a little bit scruffy over there and there are still a few potatoes to come up from under there and they're absolutely delicious so I am a bit embarrassed about the state of it but um, there's only so many hours in a day so again we have chilies on this one <laughs> I shall dry what we haven't used and yeah we have some very beautiful chilies on there I've still got quite a lot of beetroot to be picked, so we've picked and eaten some of those already. And also we haven't had time to do anything with the fence yet. I've planted a couple of the fruit trees out. And uh, once Tony puts the wires up for me, I will then pick out the best branches and start to espalier those along the wire fence. Yeah, we have a cherry and an apple for the time being, and I shall buy some more in the spring. Um, I've still got celery, which we're eating gradually. It's all a bit overgrown in here, but yeah, I managed to grow some beautiful celery. Some more beetroots here in the front. So I've had quite a few off of these. A few, a few enough for us, enough for us to have a little bit on our cereal in the mornings. And then I planted some of the wild strawberry plants in here as well, which are all spreading nicely. And then, of course, we've got the huge rhubarb. I may have to transplant these, but they're doing really well. And behind that, we still have the currant bushes. There's a gooseberry, black currant, and some raspberry canes. But yeah, so we've had some produce. Obviously, unexpectedly my time had to be spent elsewhere for a lot of it yeah I'm pleased with what we've managed to pick and eat um, there's a few remaining things on here that's not looking very healthy is it but again more peppers some things were a lot more successful than others now these plants here which I planted very early on these are actually physalis they're you know, like what they call a Chinese gooseberry. It gets a yellow fruit which has a sort of a um, shell around it. Well, not a, not a shell, um, like a paper cover around it that opens up and the yellow fruit is in the middle. Now, I'm not sure that these are going to have time to come to anything now. They usually grow about the same time as the tomato plants, but they seem to have yeah, not done so well this year. I've had lots of cucumbers, as you can see they're still, they're coming to an end as well. But we're still eating cucumbers. And then what I didn't even realise that I planted. So we'll be making some pumpkin soup or something out of those. But yeah, I have, we have been eating things for the last few months out of here. So part successful, part not successful. But yeah, it's our aim now is to get the stones down on here and the wire fencing done. He's getting some lovely big chestnuts up there. So we'll be getting some of those shortly. And if somebody said to me, it's not summer, it's autumn. And it is just about beginning to be autumn here. We do get a few weeks longer season than the UK. But yeah, the, there's a little bit of a nip in the air now in the early mornings. Um, and the leaves are starting turning brown so autumn is starting right well, we had a delivery last time I showed you 
um, the wardrobes that we went to buy at the MOs and uh, they've delivered those for us uh, I'll just go and show you can't show you where we're going to put them yet because we are getting back to the DIY in so we've started decorating again in the apartment which is where we were working when we had to stop working go start doing the restaurant so now we've started doing some more work more DIYing back in the apartment because we've decided for now that we are going to move up there ourselves so we are currently decorating the end room in which we put the bathroom and at least a couple of those wardrobes will be going in there now, this is where the wardrobes are for the time being because the delivery van backed through those gates there because he couldn't get through our other gates his van was too big so they have been delivered but they are now like big jigsaw puzzles that we have to work out how to put them all back together we won't be staying here very long uh, yes obviously they need a good clean up well that one certainly does it's had some birds above it where it's been stored so yes that's a, a project we'll show you that when it goes back together and when we eventually place those right for the time being i have to go over the restaurant now because we've got a lot of preparation work to do right, oh, what a lovely morning Just going to have a quick glance at the river, as I always do. Very serene. The water level's quite high at the moment. As I said, we've had a few days' rain, so. Yeah. Right, back to work. Bunkers already. I don't know where the summer's gone. Now it's been a while before I've shown you up since I've shown you what's been happening up here, but that's because not a lot has been happening. We have started again and um, we've decided as you can see there's a lot of clutter up here still. We've decided that we're going to move into this end room here for the time being, which we were turning into an apartment. Um, so Tony's in the process of decorating it. He's filled all the cracks in the ceiling and painted all the ceiling. Um, it's got the little patches that we need to stain and block and do again. Um, and then he started painting the walls. Now, this is where we were going to put a kitchenette, but for the time being, we've put that project on hold so that we can move up here and use this as our bedroom. As we built the bathroom next to it, we can have an ensuite bathroom. So we felt for the time being, we'll be more comfortable up here, but it would still free up the sheet so that we can possibly rent the sheet or we can use that to accommodate friends. Oh yeah, this is our current little project. Um, I have to clean up these floors because where the walls have been plasterboarded and filled and painting's been done, it's a little bit of a mess. These are my beautiful wooden floors under here. So I'll show you that project. And uh, yeah, we've still to finish the decorating. But this is where a couple of the wardrobes will be going. We have to do a little bit of work to the windows here and repaint those and the skirtings. But we have had all the electrics renewed up here. Um, so there's all new lighting and sockets and electric heaters. So we will be cosy, which is good. 
So I'll be showing you this project as we go along in the next couple of weeks. So it's back to the DIYing. Hooray! Now I said I'd tell you what was on the menu at the restaurant, so I'm just going to give you a quick glance of our current menu, which includes salmon mousse, uh, my famous tandoori chicken as a starter, and a goat's cheese and onion tart. And then we have a selection of mains, which include steaks, curry, um, comfy duck. Uh, we also do a vegetarian curry. I do what they call a tort en way, which is a, basically an English pie. But it's a chicken, chestnut and leek pie and it's very, very popular. And I also do a vegetarian version of that, which doesn't have the chicken. It has mushrooms instead. Though it's in a cream sauce with a flaky pastry top. And it's very, very popular. And then we have, we also do sharing plateaus, which is a selection of charcuteries or fromage, cheeses. And then we have separate menus for lunch. So we have a set lunchtime menu with three choices of starters, three choices of mains and three choices of desserts usually, which includes a cheese board. So we vary our desserts. So the desserts are not on this menu here. When we're open on lunch times, which currently is three times a week, we serve things like tuna pasta salad, or um, well, things like jacket potatoes for mains. Uh, simple food, but well cooked, and it seems to be going down very well. And again, a selection of desserts or a cheese board, and that's at a set price of 14 euros 50, which seems to be the standard around here. So there you have a little selection of what we have on the menu. Um, we have a three day event coming up next week. So the menu will be changing slightly because we're expecting to be very busy. Because it's the end of the summer season, the other restaurants in the town are closed. But there's a huge event going on at the what we call the pole, which is the horse event ground up at the racetrack. Um, and it's an international three day eventing. So there are people from all over the world that come here for that and we're expecting it to be very busy. And this is the advert that we currently have up for that three day eventing. But apparently the grooms and the horses start arriving on the Monday. This goes right through to the following Sunday. The judges arrive on the Wednesday who usually come here for a meal and obviously the riders, the owners. Um, so it's been, yeah, a great deal of people, including possibly some very famous people. So I'm in the kitchen at the restaurant and I'm preparing to my tandoori chicken. I'm not going to tell you how it's made because you've seen that before. Um, I'm putting this one on skewers because we serve this as a starter, but then we sometimes also serve it as a lunch at Maine with salad and coleslaw, but yeah, it's very proving very popular. Here we have 45 portions of tandoori chicken starters, ready prepped for the weekend. So carrying on with prepping, I've just moved on to making what we call apple cinnamon slices with a, the French version of a sort of flaky pastry. And this is apples, which I've put a knob of butter, some sugar and some cinnamon in the pan. And I'm just softening them gently. Right, I'm just about to roll out some pastry. It's ready-made pastry. Um, because we've got the restaurant now, we buy these big slabs, as you can see. So I've got to roll this out to fit my baking tray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a fairly large baking tray. And then I'm going to divide this up into squares so I'll show you how I do that. Now I've rolled out the pastry if you can sort of see the thickness there anyway I've covered a baking sheet and I've trimmed the pastry just around the edge of the baking sheet and what I'm going to do is roll it inwards 
to create a border around the edge. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you what I've done. It doesn't have to look too tidy because I'm going to put apples in the bottom of this so you won't actually see the bottom bit, it will just be the top bit. And then I'm going to cut some strips and put those across to create squares which we then cut up into slices. So I've cut some strips from the pastry, the same thickness as the bottom layer of the pastry. And as you can see I've laid them almost like a noughts and crosses pattern. Uh, we're not playing noughts and crosses. Uh, I'm just going to go and get an egg wash. I will stick those pastry pieces down with an egg wash. Fill it up with the apples, sprinkle it with sugar. Egg wash around the edges. And then I'll show you when it's ready to go in the oven. Another important step. So I have egg washed underneath each strip and stuck it down. I know it looks a bit messy, but once it rises up, it will change shape. Now I'm going to finish off pricking the base with a fork just so that it lets the air come through so it doesn't bubble up too much while it's cooking. I'm going to put the apples on an egg wash it. Truly pricked with a fork. All right, now it's just time to place the apples inside the squares. I'm not going to put any of the juices in because that can make the bottom a bit soggy. So I'm going to spoon those out, arrange those in there, and then I'm going to make wash it. There, I've filled up all the gaps with pieces of apple. Um, not too much of the syrup. Obviously, it's got a little bit of the juices in with it, which gives it a flavour, but not too much to make it too wet. Now I'm just going to egg wash around the edges, sprinkle it over with some sugar and it will be ready to go in the oven. There, it's egg washed. Then I'll just get a little bit of sugar and I'm using just plain old boring granulated sugar. Sprinkle it from quite high up but I'm actually sprinkling it more on the pastry than I am on the apples because the apples have been sweetened, pastry hasn't. And when we serve this, we dust it with a sprinkle of icing sugar to make it look pretty anyway. This adds a little bit of extra crunch on the pastry. We have gas ovens, although it's not from one to nine as the old fashioned gas ovens used to be. They're gas bottle ovens and our temperature range on which I'm going to bake this is 200. I don't know what it equates to for an electric oven but that's at 200 degrees and I'm going to bake it until I can see that it's ready and it looks like it's not soggy on the bottom but that's probably going to be around a half an hour and there we are it's just come out of the oven it's actually taken about 40 minutes because I wanted to make sure the bottom was cooked now I'm going to let that cool down while it's sitting on the piece of marble here and then it will go into the fridge, it will be wrapped up and we will cut that into nine individual servings where the pastry strips are. Uh, I wish you could smell it because it smells amazing. Apple and butter and cinnamon and sugar. Mm -mm. So after a long day's prep, a glass of wine on the terrace. We're learned. Oh come on, where's he gone? I've lost him. <laughs> I haven't seen one for ages. He's completely gone. Oh no. Here he is. Come on. Come back. Come back. I haven't seen one of these for ages. Oh, he's very fast, this one. He's what we call a hummingbird moth, and I'd never seen one until I came to France. Oh, he's gone. They're amazing. I absolutely love to see them. I can't keep up with him. <laughs> Beautiful. 
Now, the lady who lives on the other side of the courtyard I showed you in the last video, she's just cycled up the road. She always cycles up the road the wrong way because I don't think it's been one way all her life and she's lived here all her life. But she's just on her way back from her veggie patch. I don't know where the veggie patch is, but every time she comes past and she sees us, she gives us things. Oh, bless her. And she's just dishing things out to Tony. Ah. Oh. She's so sweet. Thank you. And the vegetables are amazing, I do have to say. She gave us some beautiful French beans. Although I've grown French beans in the garden, she gave us beautiful French beans, which we had with a locally made um, potato and cream pie that uh, one of our customers makes and sells in the market on a Monday. And it was a fabulous meal. <laughs> And she's given us a box of her lovely beans. These are gorgeous, aren't they, Tone? Oh, yeah, we had these last night with that cream pie. Oh, thank you. She's such a sweetie. Right, it's actually a really lovely afternoon. It's actually very warm, standing in the sun here. And we're between service, so we've finished lunch service, which was really busy, really good. And we're, we've got a couple of hours to spare before the evening, so I'm going to do some weeding and hopefully get a couple of our uh, winter vegetables in. I haven't planted anything for so long. So I'm going to try and plant some sweet, some parsnips and some leeks. I just need to weed this little bit first and I'm going to put them in here. Can you see that? It's a little hazelnut. Now this tree we're under is my ch sweet chestnut tree, not hazelnut tree. I have got hazel bushes that we've cut down. So I'm not quite sure where this has come from, but probably some little squirrels probably brought it over. Or some bird probably trying to hide it. But yeah, that's uh, it's like a, what we would call a cob nut. Um, but yeah, I've actually picked those in the garden, but usually the squirrels get to them first. This patch here was where I grew lettuces earlier on in the season. Um, and as you can probably see, there's some little ones that have obviously seeded themselves. gets everywhere. Trick out these little lettuce seedlings that have seeded themselves and replant them. So I've kept a little bit of the soil on the bottom where I can. There's not to disturb them too much. There we have some little self-seeded lettuce seedlings. I'll give those a water in a minute. And they've probably got a few weeks to come to a little bit more than that. They would be nice for a little sandwich or a little salad for us. So these are the leek seeds. I hope you can see that. And I'm just going to sprinkle those along in a couple of little rows 
straight into the ground. Beforehand I seeded them into little pots and then planted them out. But this time of the year it's easier just to sow them straight into the ground. These are big seeds. Look at these. These are big, big flat seeds. Anyway, I'm going to plant a couple of rows of those. I think I might have to dig over another area for the Swedes. Right. So there we have it. Some more leeks planted, some more, well, some parsnips planted for the first time, and a few lettuce plants that I've saved. I'm going to go and do another little end of the bed over there and plant my swede. Right, it's a little bit shadier over this side, which is nice for me at the moment because that sun is getting really hot. So I'm just going to finish clearing the weeds that I've already started at this end. Dig this little bit over. This is on the end of what currently has fruits in it. It has my rhubarb, strawberries, fistulous plants. Oh, it does have some celery on the end of it there. But yeah, this will be a perfect spot to plant some sweet for the winter. has a couple of stinging nettles in this one which I tried to get out by the roots and then not to put in my compost bin because they grow from the roots so I will leave those somewhere until they've dried out and they're not going to uh, root anywhere before I dispose of those This is some of the wild mint. Now, it smells absolutely gorgeous. I wish you could smell that. And I do actually leave some of it to grow because I do use it, but it gets everywhere. And again, it grows through the roots. So even that, I'm not gonna put in my compost bin. And I try to dig out quite a lot of it. So it gets to be a bit of a menace.
strawberries, so I'm not going to the store with strawberries. I'm going to myself. I'm going to the They call it a rutabaga. Rutabaga, they call it in France. We call them Swedes. Somebody call some people call them turnips. This is what they call bashed neeps, as in turnips in Scotland. Oh, we call them Swede. A mustard seed. If you can see those, yeah, like a little black mustard seed. All right. Right going in. <laughs> Did you hear that? That was a sunset on the tree. Oh, I'm going to put the sprinkler on so that everything gets watered. The little jobs jobs, that's good. And there we are, I turned the sprinkler on for a little while to water everything in. I don't know how long I've been out here, not very long, just over an hour probably, but that's very rewarding. It does make it easy to look after with these raised beds and the sprinkler. There, some new vegetables waiting to sprout. Yeah. I think this might be the one that fell off of the tree that we heard. Wow. There's going to be a beauty in there, isn't there? Gonna open it. Whiskey knife and loom here, of course. Wow! Oh, look, there's another one next to it. I do love conkers, aren't they beautiful? But unfortunately, a sign of the autumn coming. I better watch out because they're right above my head. Yeah, that's got to hurt if that falls on your head. Right, I'm off. I'm not sure if I showed you, but this is the upstairs toilet. This was the one that was about two foot away from the wall when it was fitted by the plumber. And then Tony moved it closer to the wall. And then he's boxed in all the pipes behind it, as you can see. Um, and he's fitted the little sink unit here. Obviously, we've still got a lot of work to do. In here, the electrics have been done, the fan's been installed, and that's where we are with that one. So, Tony's still painting. He's painted the ceiling. Um, he's painted the walls in a pale grey. Uh, forgive the light fitting, they are going to be changed. Uh, yeah, it's freshened it right up, and now the other walls are in a slightly darker colour. It's a sort of a denim colour. I think it's called denim drift, actually. Um, one that we brought from the UK some time ago. But I absolutely love that colour. Can you get an idea of the colour from that? Maybe.
Now we also have an update on the history of our buildings here. Um, a very kind gentleman gave us a copy of a magazine which was produced, I think it's 2017, a local history history magazine called Les Mangeurs de Grenouilles, which I believe translates as the Eaters of Frogs. Anyway, it's about our region, Liniers en Berry. And if you look very closely at the front page there, it says La Maison Topa. Well, that is my house. That is the family that we bought it from, the Topa family. But there's some very brilliant history in here some research that they've done back in the archives which takes it back several generations and there's also the Famille Andre so those of you who have watched my vlogs the Famille Andre lived in the next door house and also Montagne, Montagne sorry about my French pronunciation but we've seen a trunk in the attic with that name stamped on it Montagne so they were a, a family who lived in the house next door and there's some really interesting information in here and some pictures so i shall shortly be telling you all about that uh, there's some very interesting things in here also i i know that i haven't done part two of the map the 1673 map i do fully intend to i already had some filming done but then we had to get on with the restaurant and I just didn't have the time. So hopefully very soon I will be getting back onto that one as well because the history is important. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you soon and we'll look at this next time.